We are in the police station now. Cool. Police department report. Vehicle theft. Reporting officer Sergeant Matthew Baker. Date of the report is cut off for some reason. The year, anyway. February 26th something. At about 22.40 hours on 2 slash 25, suspect blah 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 was observed by a number of witnesses at 4050 Bromfield Road, forcibly entering a parked police cruiser. Suspect was unable to start the vehicle and depart the scene in a reckless manner, approaching surface street speeds far in excess of the posted limits. At approximately 22.45 hours, patrol officers in the area, as well as air assets from the Sheriff's Department, answered the stolen vehicle call from dispatch and began pursuit of the suspect. At 23.10 hours, suspect exited onto Interstate 94 southbound on the Route 5 off-ramp. The suspect continued southbound on Interstate 94 at excessive speeds and pursuing officers maintained a safe distance to reduce collateral risk near to nearby civilians. At approximately 08.20 hours on 2-26, the suspect crossed the state line into Ashfield and exited onto surface streets. At that time, local officers cordoned off the area to civilian traffic and dispatched road spikes. The spikes disabled the stolen vehicle, bringing it to a complete stop at approximately 08.35 hours. Okay, that's got to be relevant for something. So they're blurring out the year and the suspect's name. Could that have been me? How the hell did this get here? Yeah, that must be another thing from our file. We found something else from our file too. Just judging by Murphy's comments. These must be the police call signs. Identify each patrol car's call number. Oh. Well, probably those. Hmm, fire axe or sledgehammer? I'm gonna go with the fire axe. Should be too hard. D something seven five. Can I tell from like the blurredness? D. Uh. Hmm. Is the first always a letter? It isn't. Second from the bottom is eight five five. Try to see if there's like a pattern. Well, D something seven five. Shouldn't be too hard. I've gotten three of them so far. Yeah, they actually do all start with letters, starting with A from the bottom. A something something, B five five something, C four six six, and then top one's D. I think it was three seven five or whatever it was. Yeah, the third one from the top that looks like an A, that was just a weird looking B. There we go. There's the last one. Bronze trophy calling all cars. Okay, cool. That should make going on the streets quite a bit easier. Not having to worry about that. So what did that do for my quests? Because I had a couple. One was like, find the dispatcher, right? Missing paintings, two of six. Swarm goat for the beggar. Find a way to the radio station. Huh, so that took care of two of the quests. Find the police patrol dispatcher and stop the patrol cars. So one of the quests was, I guess, just to go here. I didn't really find the dispatcher, though. I found the dispatch room. There's no one occupying this place. I missed something over here. Yeah, I can break this. Police Department, Silent Hill, no date, no case. From the desk of Chief Ronald Doyle, Annual Felony Crime Survey. Okay, property crime. Yeah, it's a list of property crimes. To begin with, anyway. 
Incidents of burglary up from the previous year, larceny theft up from the previous year, auto theft slightly down, arson slightly up, violent crime, homicide up quite a bit, forcible rape up a bit, aggravated assault up a lot, and robbery, it's covered up for some reason. Also, the word robbery looks like it's put on like a sticker over what was actually written below it. It looks like something was crossed out below it and then a sticker was put on top. Why? That's odd. That's very strange. I can't think of what that would mean, though. Station at the old clock tower. That'd be the radio tower, right? I mean, they're a broadcaster. Clock tower and the radio tower are the same thing, so I guess we are going to meet them pretty soon. Another painting. Three out of six, I think. This looks like one of those weird paintings. I don't know if I actually need them all. I think something said that you maybe don't need them all. But I'd prefer to get them all. I suppose I can just jump. No, okay. Well, it looks like there's an enemy outside. I see their shadow on the door. Or maybe they're up above. Anyway, I'm not actually going out that door, so it's fine. Okay, so... Police station done. I've already been here, though. So... I don't know if I'm actually gonna find anything new, but obviously I missed the whole police station thing, so who... Oh, Jesus Christ! Okay. We're done here. Uh, I think I'm going back underground. Yep, let's go some other place. I don't actually know where the entrance to the subway is. Does it show it on the map? Um, I think it's that little blue thing? Down the street? Man, I really wish Murphy would run faster. Yeah, here it is. Right, back at the subway station. So Chastain Heights was locked. We just went to Hillside. It looks like it shows the door to Pleasant River is locked, but I'll try that one anyway. And then we have Port District directly above us. Wait, is this the door? No. Don't actually remember trying that door, but it is locked. <laughs> Shuts in my face so the game can load. <laughs> Wait a sec. Hmm? How... How do I go to Port District? Like, right here? Am I missing something? It shows north to Port District on the map, but... This says Port District up here? Oh, it goes down. It's locked too. Okay, I found this area by Logan's Park, which I've actually already been to. There was a question mark here, right where I'm standing and right where it's now circled at the Centennial Building. If you remember, I came down here, saw this little spot, tried to walk up here, couldn't go there, and then I left. I, I feel like there's no way I missed this door, but I just opened it. So maybe this is where I go? It, it's become circled as soon as I came here, so it's gotta mean something. Also, I think 
The treasure hunt thing with the maps might be related to these. I've seen them in a couple different places. We are all slowly dying. Wonderful. These are my parole papers. Who is doing this? What do you want from me? What do you want from me? Hey, Murphy! I got your paperwork here. Take a look. Hey, Murphy, remember, this is a limited time offer, my friend. I'll let you know. What's up, Officer Coleridge? What was that about? Mm, uh, nothing. Hey, don't bullshit a bullshitter. Sewell's bad news, Murph. He doesn't do anyone favors. What are you in for with him? It's nothing. It's... Don't worry about it. For your sake? I hope so. I don't want to get your hopes up, kid, but the parole board's looking pretty closely at your case. Don't screw this up now. Not after all I've done to get you out of here. Don't worry, Officer Coleridge. I, I got it all under control. Just some unfinished business to take care of. What the hell are you doing in here anyway, Murphy? You're, you're not like these guys. I told you, sir. It, car theft, resisting and evading and... Yeah, you stole a police cruiser and let him on a 10-hour chase down the eastern seaboard. What makes a guy with no priors and a clean sight do something that stupid? I think you at least owe me the truth. Maybe I just needed to escape from the world for a while. Yeah, well, you just steer clear of Sewell and do your homework, right? You got it, Chief. So that confirms something and also makes me think something else, which isn't really confirmed, but I suspect it's true. Well, first, that file we read about the person who wasn't named on the year that wasn't named, stealing a police cruiser and leading him on a chase, that was definitely Murphy. And the thing I suspect now is that I remember when you first started the game and we had that choice to kill that person in the showers or not with the help of Sewell, the person we were speaking with at the very beginning of that cutscene, the shady guard. After that section, I thought it was just a dream, like maybe a fantasy, somebody we wanted to kill because they maybe they were the ones that actually did the crime we were convicted of or something. Uh, obviously not the car stealing thing, but I think there's more than just that. But now, given what we just saw, maybe that actually happened. Maybe that did happen, and that was just a dream reliving it. Oh, just open this up automatically. Parole committee, uh, prisoner Pendleton Murphy, parole status. This letter is informing that parole has been approved for prisoner Murphy Pendleton, effective June 26th. They've met all qualifications for early release and by all accounts is a model prisoner. We feel he is prepared to make the successful transition from a prisoner to citizen. Further, due to the non-violent nature of his conviction, it is our opinion he poses no physical threat slash danger to the general public. Please feel free to contact our office should you have any questions and or concerns. Non-violent nature of his conviction? Was Were they arrested again or something? For some reason, I have this impression that Murphy did, or at least people think Murphy did something very bad. Like, what about that, the guard, uh, not Sewell or anything like that. I don't remember their name, but the guard that uh, almost arrested us again, the guard that gave us the stink eye when we first got on the bus, the person we tried to save from falling down into the ravine. I mean, they had something really bad against us. I, like, they acted as if I killed their kid or something. Definitely not how somebody would react if you just stole a police cruiser and led some people on a chase and didn't hurt anybody. So there's obviously more than just that. 
Ooh, radio station at the very top. Yes, yeah, so this is the clock tower slash radio station. Parking area, archive, offices, archive, offices, something, academy, restaurant, town, museum, radio station. I wonder why most of them are crossed off. Probably just not going to visit those ones. Ah, map of the place. Centennial building. Garage, elevator. I really like how used and real the maps look. Like, somebody wrote something here and then, like, patched over it with a bunch of tape. Maybe it got ripped or something. Some of the rooms are hastily scrawled out. Yeah. It's a really good looking map. I always prefer a more real kind of in-universe map than something that's absolutely perfectly clean. At least for a game like this. What was that? Sector A32 ID. Guess I need an ID card. Oh, this is the parking garage. There's a lot of blinking stuff in there. Who just left this here? Oh! Doggy! Oh, it even switches sides. Oh, this is a puzzle, isn't it? I probably need to distract it with, like, meat or something. Internal Memorandum, Royal State Prison, Captain Brian Handley, uh, let's move somewhere quieter. With less radio and barking. Captain Brian Handley, Warden Glenn Milton, subject status update and internal investigation. Per a recent conversation, my department has initiated an aggressive internal investigation into the prison guard staff. In order to keep you appraised, apprised of significant developments, please note that you are, uh, we are paying particular attention to the activities past and present of Corrections Officer George Sewell. We have received an eyewitness testimony from Corrections Officer Frank Coleridge that suggests C.O. Sewell has been engaged in a number of illegal activities in the course of his duties. Other than C.O. Coleridge's testimony, however, our evidence regards Sewell's alleged violations remains circumstantial at this point, and our investigation continues. I'll keep you promptly apprised of any new findings. Actually, you know what? Maybe maybe the um, parole was granted. And all that's true. They were granted and they didn't do a violent crime to begin with. But then before they actually got released, that's when they killed that person in the showers. That's probably it. Can I break that? Oh, heck yeah. Although it's flooded down there, so that's probably not going to work. Uh, I guess I'll go down there right now. I can't swim, can I? Too deep. Yeah. I wonder where it goes. Need to turn on a pump or something. Man, this water is hideous. Oh. Can I set it in reverse and have it suck up the water? I don't know how fire trucks work. Let's see if this works.
Nice. Oh, that just this is a crack in the earth. Or crack in the concrete that leads to the earth. What can I do about that dog? Let's look around for more stuff. It seemed like someone was going to come at me. When they started looking around, I heard like a slight noise. It sounded like somebody was nearby. Maintenance elevator. If I can just get to that freight elevator. the building via the service elevator. Okay, let's see if I can do anything with the dog. If not, then I think we're going downstairs. Like, even if I could distract the dog, why would it matter? The door's locked. Not trying to hurt the dog, just wondering if I could break the window. Not that that would help anything. Yeah, there's probably nothing I need to do with the dog. Ooh, just a box of pipes. Infinite metallic weapons. Wonderful. Let me guess, key card. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's filling up again. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, we're not fighting. So cool, I forgot for a while that they do this, but they switch back to the fixed camera angle thing. It's really cool. <laughs> Look at him out there. Creepy fucks. Sure hope that surface elevator is already on this floor. Here it is. Mm. 
Ah. What floor is this taking us to? Ah. This is where they save all the historic boxes from Silent Hill. That sounds new. Is it something that killed one of these things? Is that a UV light? Is this where I get the forensic light? Yes! L3! Uh... Oh, that's L3. Just the normal light button. On. UV. Which actually has a really wide radius. Much wider than the normal light. It's the normal light. That's UV. Yeah, so the UV light doesn't... Well, it does provide normal light. Like, I'm wondering if I want to leave it in the UV light. It doesn't go as far, but it's wider. And it is something that I might want to leave on all the time in case it reveals something special, you know? But am I really going to play the rest of the game purple? things that goes to the ceiling. Silence, please. It's called Silent Hill, not Loud Hill. Ooh. Look at that. Can I do anything with that? Uh, that was a bad noise. Guess I need to get through that door somewhere else. This is where I came from, right? And it ends here. So I guess it started here and I just need to find a way to the other side of the door. Probably get there eventually. Ooh, a map. It feels good to be in interior spaces, because the outside world is so hard for me to navigate, but here it's much easier. these scurrying noises. Just fight me. Additional clues with the UV light. Gotcha. Ooh. Secret trigger. Or something. Or maybe just important. 
classical civilizations, Rome. Ceremony known as taking the auspices. Central to this practice was the augur, a priest who would examine the movement and behavior of birds, then extrapolate from it the will of the gods. For a time, war, politics, and commerce were driven by these specialized priests. Is that handwritten down here? Is that a code? X4114? SQ or something? I'm going to take a picture of that soon. In just a minute. Another type of specialized priest of divination in ancient Rome was the Heruspex. Unlike the Augur, who believed they could tell the future through the observations of elements of the living, natural world, Herospices made their predictions by sacrificing animals, especially birds and sheep. These animals were typically purified with blessed waters prior to slaughter. Then the livers and entrails were carefully removed and examined for signs of future events. It was just such a Herospex, Titus Vestricius Spurina, that warned Julius Caesar about this, the danger on... Danger on... Okay, I can't go to another page. Looks like that's it. I'm going to take a picture of this. I want to make sure I don't miss any others. What is that fluttering noise? That is not the usual things that hang out on the ceiling, although I think I heard one of them too. That's something else. That's one of the doll things. The one that I the one I encountered in that basement. Next to that locked thing with the uh, missing person on the milk jug. That whole thing. The one that made copies of itself and I had to kill the original. It's probably gonna come alive, huh? Let's just deal with it. Oh my god, that face is fucking horrifying. Looks like somebody has specific taste in entertainment. Alright, it's not gonna wake just yet, but I'm sure it will. that around. Ah, can get to the upper floor. Ooh, it's a book up there. Sociology V5, Evolution of the Penal System, Introduction. The concept of using prison as a punishment for convicted criminals is a relatively new one. Prior to 19th century Britain, prisoners were used primarily, or prisons rather, were used primarily to detain suspects awaiting their trial, or prisoners marked for death until the sentence could be carried out. Those not sentenced to death were commonly sent into workhouses, slavery, or penal colonies. The modern-day theory behind using prisons as punishment is one of rehabilitation, though the validity of this approach is questionable. In America especially, high re-arrest rates imply there is no rehabilitation or good behavior, that once convicted, a criminal's life is forever linked to wrongdoing. Though philosophies have evolved, many practices have not. In Britain, during the Regency and Victorian periods, Prison ships, sometimes called prison hulks, were used extensively as a means for transporting prisoners to penal colonies, typically bound for places like Australia and Tasmania. However, the British penal system quickly recognized the effectiveness of water as a means of imprisonment, and began using prison hulks solely as a means of incarceration rather than transport. These stationary vessels would be packed to capaci capacity 
with prisoners and anchored just within sight of the tantalizing coast, but just far enough away that the endless deep on which they floated promised to swallow any man foolish enough to attempt to swim to shore. I just want to zoom in on this real quick. Um, rehabilitation. In America, especially high re-arrest rates imply there is no rehabilitation or good behavior that once convicted a criminal's life is forever linked to wrongdoing. Uh, I'm, what? That does not follow at all? High re-arrest rates doesn't equal 100% re-arrest rates. Okay, got a picture of those things down there. That's not what I meant to do. Oh, it's coming down. Nope. Another dismembered one. Eternal Memorandum, again. The original one was from Captain Brian Handley to the Warden. This one's from the Warden to the Captain. Prisoner Patrick Napier, deceased. That's probably the person I killed in the shower, right? Concerning the recent unsolved murder of the subject named... named prisoner in our facility, a full and complete review of all isolation and segregation procedures will be undertaken by you and your staff. With findings turned into my office no later than close of business, 21st of November. Included in your report will be full investigation results regarding Napier's murder, including those responsible for overseeing the victim's activities during the time of the incident. Specifically, how another prisoner was allowed access to the segregation area. Please note your guard staff is not exempted from suspicion and should be treated thusly. This investigation should be considered your highest priority. I am determined that we will restore Ryle's reputation as a top-notch prison facility. Consider this your first and last warning. So it talks about the recent unsolved murder of that person in the showers. So I was thinking Sewell's only help was just getting us there so that they could kill them, but it sounds like they also kept quiet about who even murdered Sewell. And remember, we fogged up the cameras in that place, specifically so there'd be no video evidence of the murder. Huh. I mean, I'm pretty sure we were, get this? we were caught at some point, though. Even if not right away. Okay, second floor. Hmm, I see something over there. I saw hair. I definitely saw hair. It's right there at that spot between the bookshelves, right over Murphy's head. I need a proper weapon. I have a... Oh, fuck. It's one of the dolls. I need something more than a stick. Hmm. Is that the one from downstairs? Oh, I think it is missing from down there. Oh, wait. I didn't check all the books, did I? Entomology, Volume 3. Apis mellifera, or honeybee. 
The bee is an interesting insect and one that is quite a bit in common with us humans. Bees build and live in societies, hold down jobs, and communicate in a symbolic language. These commonalities extend even further. Bees build prisons. These t <laughs> okay, hold on, let's just stop for a second. So, I'm pretty sure these books, like, in terms of what you need to get from them is probably this thing down here related to a puzzle or something like that. I don't think you actually need to read the words. I don't think that's really the main point. But they have made them kind of like sort of subtly, sort of not subtly in some cases, revolve around the themes of the game. They've been about prisons. One was literally about prisons. This one mentions bees having prisons. These tiny penitentiaries are offset from the rest of the hive and are used primarily to detain hive beetles. Pests have threatened the safety of the bee's home. Before long, the sentence is delivered and the death penalty rendered via lethal injection. <laughs> it seems in hive law, beetles are guilty unless proven innocent. <laughs> Solitary honeybees are typically docile and rarely attack unless provoked to the extreme. When the bee does choose to attack, this... Single act of retribution is almost always fatal for the bee itself. The barbed stinger of the bee pulls the lancet deep into the skin of the victim, injecting one milligram of apotoxin. When the bee attempts to flee the scene of the crime, it finds that a large part of its abdomen, guts, nerve, and muscle tissue are torn from its body and left behind. Eviscerated, the bee dies shortly after, paying the ultimate price for revenge. What's going on in there? There's a person. Sounds like they were just attacked or killed. There's creepy footsteps. Maybe from the doll? Obviously you need some passwords to get in there. And also looks like something's been scratching at it with huge claws. So 1 through 10 are our selections. Oh, it's for the upper floor. Okay. Where does this go to? Library director's office. I love those changes to this camera angle. Or this this type of camera, rather. Should I heal? Yeah. Oh. There's a number written on that box. Do you see it? Upside down. Five digits. Does it matter? Maybe. Okay, just saved. I think I'll end this episode here then, because it doesn't seem to save very often. <laughs> it's not very generous with them. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to check out the rest of the library.